Pasta fans around the world unite There's a podcast for you tonight With Gigi and Olivia Bow to hit you with some penny trivia So come on and listen in We're talking about pasta again it's the Pasta Podcast. Hello and welcome back to the Pasta Podcast where we talk about nothing but pasta. Today we will not be talking about pasta. Today we're going to be rating uh, some aesthetics on exactly how hyped they deserve to be. I of course am a pasta chef. My name is Gigi and to our other fellow pasta chef, what is your name? <laughs> <laughs> I am Olivia. Welcome to the Pasta Podcast. (laughs) Okay, well, um, I think that we should just dive into. um, You doing your thing? Yeah, I can't see you by the way. Pasta Podcast is one word. Yeah, it's it's one word. We're a company or something. (laughs) Anyways, uh, I did make a slideshow for for those that are not aware. So, um. Sorry, I can hear my dog squeaking a squeaky toy. Oh, well, I can Um, hear myself. (laughs) Anyways, um, aesthetics. Are they worth the hype or not? A pasta podcast presentation. First on the list, plant mom. (laughs) The plant mom aesthetic. This aesthetic features, you guessed it, plants. If you have tons of plants in your home, in every room, you might have this aesthetic. Um, Now, this is just me. And maybe I'm a little biased, um, but I think that this this aesthetic is completely worth the hype. Um, I think <laughs> it's beautiful. I would rate it five out of five. <laughs> um, the logistics of this are, um, you know, all in all, it's a good idea because, you know, plants, they produce um, oxygen. So if you have a bunch of plants in your home, you're like breathing better air. So it's better for you. And plus, if you have more plants, it's better for the environment because it obviously cleans up the air outside as well. So I think it's a good thing that people are plant moms. I think it's funny that they name them. Um, I I like that they are teaching others about plants, too, because I don't know anything about plants. I wasn't aware that you are supposed to water a succulent. (laughs) And I have had multiple succulents die because of this. So thank you, plant moms, for teaching me that succulents need to be watered as well. Yeah. Um, also, this is a sign that if you have a cactus in your house, please water it <laughs> if it looks dry and thirsty. Not a lot of water, but they still do need water. Um, that's one of the like more... Um, one of the more... Um, not well-known succulents that people don't know that you need to water. You still need to water cactuses. Well, I mean, it's like those those kind of cacti, they, like, they're in the desert, but they're not in, like, every desert, you know? I just realized is that there's two different types of desert. There's, like, the cactus tumbleweed. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> you know? The, like, <laughs> the, um, <laughs> the cowboy cactus desert. And then there's the desert that's the... <laughs> the, like, the um, the song that they put in every movie that has, like, an Indian person in it. They're like, ah, <laughs> yes, this is exactly like, what it would yeah, be. Yeah, like an Arab person, they're always like, oh, yeah, the desert. And they're it's like, funny because I was thinking of Dune when I said that. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, yeah, um, we're in the desert because they're an Arab person, and yeah, they have a pet camel. <laughs> it's like, that's not... <laughs> Yo, but that's actually so true, because there's camels in the Arab, like, in, like, the Arab deserts and stuff, but in, like, you know, Arizona, <laughs> there's no, like, <laughs> there's no camels there. There's, like, what is their cactus? There's only two different kinds of deserts, according to Olivia. Arab... And Arizona. <laughs> <laughs> oh, in Mexico. Yeah, they don't count. 
Gigi, I was convinced for a certain period of time that cowboys rode cows, and I think that we should move on now. (laughs) Okay, (laughs) Um, moving on. We rate this five out of five. Moving on. Uh, We have light academia. And light academia is uh, an aesthetic that features a few main things. Books, glasses, and architecture. It's mainly based off the aesthetic of learning and not actually learning. So (laughs) that's so me. (laughs) Um, But um, I I think that this one is overhyped. I think that that's uh, a little bit controversial to say. But I see a lot of people doing this aesthetic. And I think that it's just like... It's like college life, but if you never went to college. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's college life of Harry Potter. People were normal. Yeah, that's what I was thinking while I was writing this. I was like, should I put that? And then I was like, I don't want to mention J.K. Rowling. This. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I didn't. First of all, you're the one that mentioned her. I just mentioned Harry Potter. <laughs> okay, yeah, sure. But, um, I, I think that, um, I mean... I don't really understand the academia aesthetic in itself. Yeah. I don't understand dark academia, light academia, medium academia. We'll I'm get sure to a, we'll get to dark academia in a second. Here we will, and I, I'm sure medium academia is going to be a thing at some <laughs> point. People always do that, you know. My my child who only eats who only eats beige food, you know, my butter mom. You know how people just name stuff now. I yeah. Don't, not everything needs a name. I think you know that, what that is communism. Yeah, I think that if we do end up making a a middle academia or a medium de- academia, I, in academia, yeah, um, I would like it to be like actual college life. It would just be the grungiest, like dirtiest, <laughs> like two by four rooms with one poster in it and one bed, um, See, and it would but- be that. <laughs> I think that college life is so different for everybody. Right now, the college life for me is um, I wear sweatpants while I do my homework. <laughs> and I'm a fashion major. So that shows you that, you know, college is different for everybody. Yeah. Um, so I think that the academia aesthetic is more like boarding school vibes. Um, and I think it's, I think it can be cute. But that's it. I give it a three. Three out of five. Okay. Continue. Moving on to dark academia. (laughs) Um, Dark academia is the same thing with the brightness turned down. (laughs) Um, Although I will say it adds candles because it's dark. And how I wrote it in this uh, preview is I like to think of it as dark academia or light academia being everyone else in high school based um, a high school based movie and dark academia being the edgy main character because <laughs> <laughs> um, that's kind of what it is. It's just like darker brown and some black. Um, and honestly, they overlap a lot. They're essentially the same thing. They're just darker colors. Um So, I think it's, like, generally the same thing. I do kind of, I do kind of like dark academia a little bit more, but that's just because I'm a dark-colored person. Like, I like dark colors on me, so I'd be more inclined. (laughs) Yeah, I I had to, (laughs) I had to clarify. (laughs) I'm white. I am white. Um, I feel like with the, both of the academia aesthetics, I cannot, like, It just feels so white person to me. I don't know what it is. It just feels so Caucasian to me. Yeah, I I I gotta tell you, I did see a lot of, um, there are some photos on here. I do have photos of, like, actual outfits. It's just that most of these first ones are just, like, aesthetic in general. Um, But in the actual outfits that I picked out for some of the um, aesthetics on this list... Um, there was actually a lot of diversity that I was able to get in here, but for the dark academia and light academia outfits that I was scrolling past, all white, (laughs) all white people, (laughs) all white women. Um, so, you know, I don't think that there's a lot of room for, um, diversity in this aesthetic. I'm sure that there could be, but it's like, (laughs) yeah, I mean, 
there they kind of be willing there's always room for diversity in like if you're willing to make it but it's like i don't think that we should i don't think we should be making people of color um have to work around it you know i feel like we should have examples of what can work for them i don't know um i'm just talking at this point so oh goodness i think you're on a tangent okay what should we name it um i i'd also go three out of five it's the same it's the same thing (laughs) it's just darker colors um anyways moving on moving on to cottage core aesthetic um the (laughs) the cottage core aesthetic is based off again you guessed it cottages farm life cottages Mm -hmm. and cute clothes are still somewhat sensible to wear at a farm uh, and the fashion includes long skirts, knit or crochet sweaters, and headscarves, and things as such. <laughs> um, and I gotta say, this is a very hyped aesthetic. And I remember when it was really hyped back in, like, 2020. Um, but it still absolutely holds up, in my opinion. And I think it's a really good aesthetic. See, I think that... Um... I don't know what other aesthetics you have on here, but I feel like cottage court is one of those like more whimsical ones, which makes it more fun. Um, and I, the way I think of cottage court is like sitting inside in like a, a like a small house with a rocking chair, and you're like it's raining out, and you're like drinking like some Earl Grey. Like it just sounds nice. Yeah, it's just it's just really nice, and um, I think I I think that it's pretty much every at least white person's dream in my experience because I'm white. <laughs> um, because who who doesn't walk past? Have you ever been to one of those like hardware stores where they also have live animals? I don't know how else to describe those stores. <laughs> um, but you ever walk yeah. past the little chick, the little like chicks? And you're like, oh my god, can we take one home? And then your mom's like, no, we don't have the resources for that. <laughs> and you're like, what if we bought a whole farm just for this one chicken? And then they're like, no. <laughs> um, um, no, but I think that I think that cottage core is really sweet because it's also um, it's very inclusive. Like a lot, of, like it accommodates a lot of different religions. It accommodates a lot of different body types. So I think it's, um, I think, like, the academia ones, they're not as inclusive as this one. Because, you know, it's like boys and girls can wear this one and anything in between. You know, it's like it accommodates everybody. So I don't know. I like this one. I give it a yeah. five. Yeah, I, I give it a five, too. I think it's very pretty. Um, also, the Cottage Living is, like, my favorite Sims 4 pack. So... <laughs> I oh, yeah, I'm a good. little biased. Um, it's it's really good. It's, it's very yeah. good. If you're a Sims Four player and you only have a few packs and you don't have that one, buy that one. You will not regret it. It's got a big world. It's got nice clothing and it's got good uh, items that you will be using all the time. I bought that like as soon as it released years and years ago, and I'm still using the items from that pack. <laughs> Anyways, it's really nice. Separate tangent. We're moving on. <laughs> I use that one. I like it. Yeah. Okay. We're moving on to the baddie aesthetic. Um, oh, shoot. We're I don't, getting into the, yeah. I don't know much about this aesthetic, so I had to look some things up for some of these. Um, so the baddie aesthetic is somewhat versatile. Uh, some It's typically seen with either very fitted clothes or very baggy clothes. Um, and there are a lot of subgenres of baddie. Um one of the ones that I put on the screen is was labeled as boho baddie. Um, and they're typically defined by wearing what you want with complete confidence in it. Um, and I gotta say, it's not my personal aesthetic. But, like, I do like that idea of it because it's just about wearing what you want with confidence. So that's I think it's always good. more of a combination of, like... Um... Uh, like you gotta have a ratio going of like a really tight top and really tight pants and then really large shoes and like a really large overcoat or something 
you know, it's like you got to have like something tight and something large. Um, like I see a lot of people wearing like those really small tube tops and then huge cargo pants and then like those huge chunky like shoes. I think that's more what it is, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's fine. It's not really for me. Yeah, but, it's, um, it's not for me either. I just, I do, like, after reading about it, I do think that it's overall a good thing because it's just supposed to be a, about confidence. <laughs> um, but the problem with that is that the aesthetic is everywhere because if you're confident in your clothing, you're a baddie. <laughs> Um, which yeah. means that if you're in cottage core wear and you are confident in it, you are now a Betty. <laughs> um, <laughs> but it's not really for me. And the style isn't really for me. I personally would rate it like three out of five. Yeah, I'm not a huge fan of it either. I think that, um, I think it's uh, hugely based off of like early 2000s clothing. And yeah. I wish that we could all come into agreement, and I know it's going to be a long time until we do, that the early 2000s was not a good era for fashion. Oh, we'll get there. It was Olivia. not. We'll get there. <laughs> um, all right, I'm glad. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, three out of five. We're moving on five. from the baddies into yeah. the grunge aesthetic. Um, and the grunge aesthetic uh, is defined, defined by the three Fs, fishnets, flannels, and no fucks given. <laughs> <laughs> I gave myself a good tickle with that one. Um, baggy jeans and black are also staples of this aesthetic. Uh, generally speaking, grunge is a dark aesthetic with a lot of sub subgenres, so it can't really be fully defined. I saw a lot of different um, like styles when I was looking for photos on for this on Pinterest um, of different styles of clothing. So mm. I tried to go with a more traditional grunge for this. So I figured we'd wait the traditional one. Um, I don't like grunge. <laughs> I don't know what it is about it. I just, it's not my thing. I don't like the ripped jeans. Um, baggy jeans are not my favorite. I do like the wide leg jeans, but baggy jeans in general, I feel like are in my personal experience as a uh, plus size girly, it makes me feel really big and also like they're going to fall down if they're baggy on me. So um, I don't think they really work with all body types, but maybe they do. Yeah. Um, um, I think they do work with all body types. You just have to know how to like look, look for the right stuff. Um, I don't mind grunge. I like, I prefer punk. I don't know if you have the punk aesthetic on here. I don't but, have um, punk on here, so you can talk about punk if you want. Okay, great. I I prefer punk better because punk has a political idealistic behind it, whereas grunge, it's literally, I feel like grunge, you're just dressing like that to be different, to like, to be like, I'm not like every other girl. And it's like, it's it's fine. Like, yeah, if you dress like that, if you think it's cute, then you should wear it. We've went over that many a times in this, <laughs> but um, I think that the feeling with modern grunge, anyway, not '90s grunge, because '90s and um, '90s grunge is way different. Um, but with modern grunge, it's changed so much that it doesn't even feel like grunge anymore. It feels like um, dirty, dark academia. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it really um, does. Um, I same shoes. Think that, yeah, I think that if we're if we're discussing the modern grunge, easily like a two out of five. Um, I think the punk, the punk era is better. Um, definitely '90s grunge is better um, because, well, number one, that's when it was like first popularized, and it being grunge and punk was this new idea that no. Like, especially, like, women had never done anything like that. <clears throat> Sorry, I don't know what's going on with my voice today. <laughs> but, um, it's like, I don't know. In the 90s, it was a statement. <clears throat> Nowadays, it's doing it to just not... It, it's like, it's like, follow, it's like bandwagon. You know, it's like, how... 
you're just trying to be like other girls, I guess, and yeah. you're not at the same time. So, I don't yeah, like it. I do. I do think that it's um a lot more mainstream now, and I think that makes it worse. Um, it seems like a try hard thing. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, um, but. I mean, that doesn't happen with all aesthetics, because, like, we've already gone over Cottagecore, but Cottagecore was very big in, like, 2020 for some reason. Um, and then I feel like the hype for it was really high, and then it kind of died down, but it's still, like, a good thing. <laughs> and um, I'm sure there's problems that arose from that, um, mm. but I don't have time to get into that right now. Um but, yeah, I do think that grunge kind of is very um, just normal clothes, <laughs> but ripped. <laughs> Dark. Uh, black yeah. clothes that have holes in them, and you're calling that your style. Um, and, listen, I've been on the ripped jeans bandwagon before. Um, I did get off. <laughs> um, I'm sure I I've still never have. Been on that band I'm sure I still have ripped jeans somewhere. I just don't wear them anymore. Um, but it, it's just. Um, I don't. I, what I'm trying to say is I don't like it, <laughs> and I don't yeah. like the connotations it has now. I I don't like it either. I I'm just I I prefer punk. I think Dear. punk is a much better punk and goth. They're much better aesthetics. Yeah, I should have put I should have put goth on this list. I did not put that. You didn't put goth? No, wow, I'm ashamed. I put on, goth I put would have been some... a five out of five. I love goth. Yeah. I could never be goth, but the aesthetic <laughs> is like so cool. I love, I love people who dress goth. It's so cool. Yeah, um, but dare dare we rate grunge as a one out of five? I would I would do it. Okay. I think Brunch is like uh, Brunch. one out of five. Moving on. And if Goth was here, we'd put it five out of five. Yeah. Uh, moving on to Grandma Chic, which I'm very excited to discuss this one because I didn't know much about it, and it's kind of it's kind of cool in my opinion. Uh, just letting you know where I stand right now. Um, oh shoot! I think I'm Grandma Chic, Gigi. <laughs> the Grandma Chic aesthetic is known for intricate knitted and usually vintage sweaters. Uh, its defining feature is making quote-unquote grandma clothes look cute and stylish, which I personally think they already are, but whatever. Um, mm. Think long pattern skirts, embroidered flowers on shirts, and the ever-classic embroidered sweater. Um, I think that the style is very cute. Um, I especially like the... Um, all of you can see it. You guys uh, will be able to when I share the link to the... Um, presentation but i especially like the vest that's on um this slide that i put um i think mm -hmm. that that's very cute um and i think that it's very mm -hmm. um versatile and you could do it with anything i don't know i think it's very cute and i think it um kind of it, it's kind of similar to like the the early grunge where it's stepping away from what women are quote-unquote supposed to wear you know because this is like you know grandma style so young women aren't supposed to wear this but we still can <laughs> and we can still make uh, it look cute so i do want to say i think i am grandma chic because <laughs> 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 everything i wear my mom is like you look like a grandma and i'm like yeah but i look cute right <laughs> <laughs> um i literally just bought this like sweater shirt and my mom was like you that looks like something your grandma would wear and i was like yeah but it's cute yeah um so i would like to think this is me on a good day um obviously my other aesthetic is um comfortable clothing but yeah. um i i mean yeah i think this is like a really inclusive um really inclusive aesthetic a lot of like anybody can wear it that's what i really liked is that like um, you can wear, like, oversized stuff if you're larger and not particularly comfortable Yeah, <laughs> with how you look. You can wear larger, more oversized stuff, and it'll still look cute, which I think is nice. 
Um, yeah. And I think there's a lot of like um, larger pants and uh, high waisted pants and like mom jeans and stuff in this. So, yeah, I think it's really cute. I like it. I think I am it on a good day. <laughs> I like I like this style a lot. I think that we rate it five out of five because it is very nice. Um, mm-hmm. I do agree that I think you're very grandma chic. <laughs> it's low maintenance. Yeah, you just need a sweater. <laughs> you literally you well you just need like a shirt, jeans, and, and like some kind of like vest or tunic. <laughs> yeah, and you're set. Exactly. Um, All right, shall we move on? Yeah, moving on. Pretty quick decision. We're going oh to Y2K, and apparently Olivia has a lot to say about this, but I will I have quickly a lot of feelings. I will quickly go over Y2K. Um, the Y2K aesthetic is based off the many different fashion and style choices <laughs> that came in the 2000s. Think low-rise jeans, jeans under skirts, but also think flip phones, magazines, and even chunky blonde highlights. <laughs> These, there are many different styles that came from Y2K, but these are just a few. Um, now, when <laughs> we're talking Y2K, there's two things I think of. And the two things are the toys and the fashion. Because me and Gigi did grow up in the early 2000s. So we're, it's like very, I'm very nostalgic for that time. But um, also like the different stuff in that era. <laughs> I know, like, by aesthetic, we're talking about clothes right now, but um, just, like, the things in general in that era is very nostalgic for me. But um, when we're talking about the clothing, some of the worst fashion decisions were made at that time. They didn't know they were being made at the time. They thought they were great. Yeah. We thought they were great. We all thought they were a serve, but they were not. They were terrible. Um, yeah. I'm I sorry. Do- I do have to say that when I was looking for photos like this on Pinterest, as you can see, I have one outfit up and the bigger picture is just like a Y2K aesthetic photo that's not of clothing because I couldn't bring myself to find anything else. That was the best outfit that I could find that was Y2K because I don't like this aesthetic. Um, yeah. It's just it's just so bad. And um, honestly, the Y2K like aesthetic that we have now is first off 10 times better than the actual fashion in the 2000s was Um, yeah but that's still to say that it's bad um because a you're um glorifying a fucking year (laughs) you're fucking you're glorifying a decade (laughs) um of our of our lives um which feels weird to me i mean i know we've done that with like 50s fashion and everything um, but that still kind of feels weird to me, is 50s fashion and everything. I'm not going to get into that right now. Um, but my point being that the Y2K aesthetic is very different than what we actually were wearing in the 2000s. And it's still bad. <laughs> um, yeah, I think you're right. There's a lot of um, people like to remember some things and not remember the others, like 9-11. Yeah. <laughs> um, that did have a very, um, what people don't understand about 9-11 is that, yeah, a tragic incident. But it also had a very huge impact on the fashion industry. Like, huge. Yeah. Like, clothing from that point on changed drastically. But, um, it's also, um, and I, I think that the way people are looking at Y2K fashion now is a very narrow-minded view. Like, you know how... Okay, so we were talking about how, like, grunge used to be really cool, and now it's really lame. Mm-hmm. The Y2K used to be really lame, and now it's decent. So... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think if we're talking about, like, people dressing in the Y2K aesthetic right now, it's fine. Like, I'd yeah. give it, like, a three. But if we're talking about the Y2K aesthetic during 2000, now that's terrible. Yeah. Um, the reason I put, um, jeans under skirts, I don't remember which act, like, popular actress it was, or singer, that wore jeans under skirts in, like, a, a photo Herald. in the 2000s. Harold. Uh, Harold? <laughs> no, I said terrible. Oh. I thought you said Harold. I was like, who the fuck is Harold? Um, 
Anyways, um, th- that photo has been uh, scorched into my mind. I never want to see it again, but I see it every time I think of my 2K. Um, also, <laughs> I didn't add this to the list, but nobody realizes that fedoras were a really big hit in the 2000s. And um, we need to leave that behind. And I know we have with the Y2K aesthetic now, but it's still part of the aesthetic. So maybe we should just drop the whole thing, you know? <laughs> um, please tell me that you have the 2010s aesthetic in here. Oh, God, no. <laughs> I don't think I could bring myself to because that would admit that we're old. Um, no, because that was so when we were funny. dressing ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that was that was so funny. That's like a personal favorite of mine to cringe at. <laughs> it's so funny. I was Gigi. I went to Paris, France, the fashion capital of the world, and what did I wear? Okay, <laughs> sure. A, a, a striped V neck with neon yellow and gray. <laughs> what about your classic cat shirt? And a shirt that had a zoomed in picture of a cat. <laughs> That I got from Forever 21 when they had a kids section. Now they don't even have a section. Now it's all open. <laughs> now it's now there's nothing. Yeah. Um, anyways. Bad. So, Y2K, I think we're rating it... I would... Are we rating 0 out of 5 or are we just glo- going to 1 out of 5? Oh, I was... I thought we were talking about this... The modern one, right? Uh, yeah... I guess oh, we're I talking about the like two or three. See, I still don't think that it's good. <laughs> I mean, like, like some <laughs> of the things, <laughs> some of the things, like the bracelets and everything from that era. It's like, oh yeah, that's that's cool. But uh, yeah, but everything else, everything else, I don't like. <laughs> yeah, but it's better than grunge. I guess um, we can rate it two I'd out of five. Too. Okay, two out of five. Moving on. Um, next we have the old money aesthetic. Oh boy. <clears throat> yeah, I have some things to say about this one. Um, the old money aesthetic comes from the basis of, yes, old money. Uh, by the way, take a shot every time I say that. Um, think regal architecture, um, giant wa- well-staffed mansions, headscarves, gloves, pearls, big sunglasses, and the need to be rude to your underpaid wait staff while sitting by th- and not enjoying your $200,000 pool. Um, now, I don't know if you could tell by my description of old money aesthetic. I think it's stupid. Um, do I think the fashion is kind of cool? In a way, yeah. Um, I don't like the meaning it has, you know? Um, I don't like the idea of old money being an aesthetic. Because it feels very Nepo baby that doesn't give a shit about anybody else. Um, And I don't think it's controversial to say that that's bad. So that's how I feel about this aesthetic. You know what it gives me? It gives me um, Bruce Wayne. (laughs) (laughs) Um, (laughs) um. But he's he's like a self-made billionaire, isn't he? No, he's a Nepo baby, Gigi. Well, I didn't know that. I thought that his parents died. How could he be a Nepo baby? His parents were rich and they left him all of the money in his their will. Yo. His dad was a like a his dad was a surgeon and his mom was something of importance, I'm sure. <laughs> but they were like that's why they have a mansion. <laughs> I thought that I thought that the dude was like because he's got all those like basically nuclear weapons. I thought that he had just like learned how to make the, like well, shit. being Batman was different. He became <laughs> Batman on his own. He yeah. didn't become rich on his own. He became rich from his family. How do you think they they had Alfred way before he was born? <laughs> just because he's old doesn't mean that he has to have been there before he was born. <laughs> That's um, ageist, Olivia. Anyways. So Bruce Wayne is the old money aesthetic. Um, <laughs> <laughs> which is funny. Well, then I feel um, differently. <laughs> <laughs> um, but Bruce Wayne's different because he does stuff. Also, um, he's not real. Uh, no, <laughs> um, Not to break it in a- anybody's bubble, but he's not a real person. But if he was real, 
he he would be he would be pretty good. I think I think people would like him. Um, I think he would be the type kind of guy that you see on Twitter of like he's the only billionaire that's actually doing something good with his money. You know, he would be that <laughs> kind of you know. I don't yeah. know. So, um, anyways, the aesthetic itself. <laughs> I've never met anybody who <laughs> this. I only see it online, and that yeah. says everything I need to know. See, my first introduction to it was, um, um, I think about a month ago, I was watching a Sims build, um, little video, and one of the, they were doing aesthetics, and one of them was old money, so they rolled on old money, and they had to build like that, um, and I was like, what the fuck is old money? Does that just mean, uh, old rich people? (laughs) Which, yes, old money, old rich, yeah. that's the same thing. Um, but I find it, uh, first off, I think that the name is stupid. Old money is kind of stupid. Uh, I think it should be called the Nepo Baby aesthetic, because that's what it is. Because um, old money doesn't mean you're an old person and you have money. Which is what I feel like I thought <laughs> the first time I heard the aesthetic name. Um, I was like, ah, old person that has mansion. Uh, but no, it's just like somebody from generations of rich people that's just like there now and they don't have to work for anything. Uh, yeah, I don't like that. Um, <laughs> but I think this is a fairly new aesthetic as far as at least the name goes. And I think it's stupid, especially in a society where I thought that we were kind of getting to the point where we understood that rich people are bad. <laughs> um, or at least, like, w- rich people like this, you know? Like, it, if you're rich and you live yeah, in California, you're not actually rich. <laughs> unless yeah, you're, like, a billionaire. Like, oh, we're writing the aesthetic, not the people. But the aesthetic comes from the people. <laughs> Aesthetics are just a bunch of people. <laughs> so what do you think? Um, I think one out of five. I don't like this aesthetic. Um, it's it looks nice. It doesn't really look nice. <laughs> it looks yeah, like it looks really the picture nice I have in the corner right here of the architecture. It looks t- like too much is going on. It looks um, very Eurocentric. This it looks, looks like it. This looks like the entrance to a theater that's been there for thousands of years. You know. Um, you know what it looks like. It looks like. Um, it it looks like European stuff, and I don't like Europeans, so one out of five is fine. <laughs> okay, we've agreed. One out of five. I'm moving on before Libby changes her mind. <laughs> Anyways, um, oh. next we have coquette aesthetic. Um, oh boy, I just recently <laughs> learned what this is. Um, coquette is an aesthetic based in extremely cute, mostly pink fashion. Um, it typically has stuff to do with, like, corset-like tops, but not actual corsets most of the time. Um, flowers, books, tiny pearls, and lace. Um, it's unlike other cutesy styles like kawaii, which we will get to, um, because it's based in, like, colors and simple patterns. Um. Precisely. It, it's, um, like, it's nice to look at. I won't deny that. Um. I don't like it. Yeah, it's just not me. <laughs> it's not a feminine phenomenon. It's a feminine phenomenon. Um, I think that this is like offensive. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to describe it. I feel like this is one of the, you know how we were talking about like how grunge and like um some of the other aesthetics we've mentioned on the list were like at the top of their like. At the height of their popularity, it was like, women aren't supposed to wear this. This is like everything that women were supposed to wear. And I don't really like that we're making it an aesthetic. (laughs) Um, Yeah. Because it's just kind of implying that you're supposed to be cute. And that this is the only thing that's cute is lace and pink and tiny clothes. Also, I don't ever see a plus size woman in coquette aesthetic. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, while I was searching for thing. this, literally never like, saw a single person of color or a, a plus size woman <laughs> in this outfit. Um, but yeah, I don't like this. Not the, not the, not worth the hype. Not worth the hype. I, 
I'd go as far as to say one out of five because, um, like, it, it's just to me it's old money but worse. <laughs> um, old money but skinny and pink. Yeah, so that's worse. At least old money people can still be plus size. <laughs> Um, Even more likely because they're rich. Yeah. Um, Moving on. To cyberpunk. Oh. And um, I didn't actually really know what this was. (laughs) So I had to do some research for this one. Um, And the cyberpunk aesthetic, as I understand it, is based in futuristic and punk style clothing. It tends to feature dark and gritty urban environments Neon-lit cityscapes, rain-soaked streets, and a mix of high-tech and low-life elements. And yes, I copied and pasted that from some kind of article that I am not crediting, because <laughs> nobody's going to see this anyway. Um, do I understand what any of that means? Not really. Is the fashion and everything kind of cool? Yeah? Um, would I wear it now? <laughs> it gives me um huge... um. Like Tokyo Drift vibes, yeah. Um, and like cars, like um, drifting cars. I don't know what they're called. I know they have a name, but I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't. I think it's fine. I think it's very popular amongst the dance dance community. <laughs> I don't know people yeah. who dance. It's yeah, very no, popular. I got you. People who dance. Um, but I. I just, I don't know. It just seems so expensive to me. Yeah. Like, that's not what punk is. Um, Sorry, but it's not. This is not cyberpunk. This is cyber. Yeah, I don't think that cyberpunk is the right word for it. Because I'm not seeing... It says punk style clothing. But I'm not seeing... The punk style. The punk style. Nor am I seeing any punk like elements into it because punk punk clothing is typically like very much not based in anything that the like punk is very like anti-government anti everything that's like wrong with the world um and i feel like cyberpunk it looks like you know fitting in with the environment around you which is typically like the same kind of like um it says neon lit cityscape and everything so they fit that aesthetic um and fitting in with aesthetics is not what punk is about <laughs> mm. um it's not with the, about fitting in with the environment around you it's about um standing out making your own way and yeah. um like not listening to what other people want you to wear because that's um yeah kind of stupid um so we can agree that cyberpunk is not it's not cyber- punk <laughs> at all um, it's, it's just cyber um as far as the cyber aesthetic i mean yeah it looks futuristic i guess well, i don't, I I mean, don't know how it's not it. i mean we don't it's know what, we don't know how the future will look so I'm guessing that this I is what people that, think it's going to look like. But <laughs> Well, I think that if this was named something else, you know, if it was just na- named like a neon aesthetic or something, I think that would like fit it much better. Mm-hmm. Um, otherwise, I think it's cool. I think it suits a lot of people. It works really well with a lot of people. I don't, I would never wear that myself. But yeah. you're hearing that from the grandma chic girl. <laughs> so <laughs> very different aesthetics, I guess. I think um, it's a cool I think the clothing itself is cool. And I think they're like, you know, it's inclusive for the most part. Yeah. Um so I mean I would give it a three. I'd I'd give it a three. Um I do think that they got the name completely wrong. <laughs> yeah. But no, I think you should name it something else. Other otherwise, yeah, I'd give it a three. Uh moving on to Barbie core aesthetic. Now, uh, oh. we worked at a movie theater when the Barbie movie came out, so we know about uh, the Barbiness <laughs> that, um, and most people do because of how big the Barbie movie was. But just as a recap, the Barbie core aesthetic is simply 
Barbie pink. Uh, pink patterns, pink accessories, pink outfits, pink everything. It does occasionally feature other colors, and it doesn't always have to be pink, but it's mostly pink clothing and items. And it's doll-like accessories, like plastic-looking shoes and purses that are also staples of this aesthetic. Um, I don't really think that there's much more explanation for what Barbie core is, because most people know what Barbies are now, at least. <laughs> um, yeah. So I feel like it's very, oh, they dress up like a Barbie, you know? It's, <laughs> I don't think I have to, I, I don't know how to explain it because it's something that I think everybody knows about now. Um, I do think it's pretty cute and I have done Barbie core before so that, cause I've, you know, I went to the theater to watch the movie. Um, so I dressed up in Barbie core clothes, but, um, it's not for me, <laughs> but yeah. it's cute. Yeah, it's fine. I mean, um, I feel like it's been a thing long before the um, the Barbie movie. I think mm -hmm. Mean Girls kind of pioneered the this aesthetic a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, and I mean, it's cute. It's it's very kitschy to me. I think that um, it does kind of get too annoying and loud. So, I don't know. <laughs> That's just me, though. I think yeah. it's cute on some people, but I think it's too loud. To me, it feels like with with outfits that are just like all one col color, it feels like if it wasn't pink, it wouldn't be barbiecore. But because it is pink, it's barbiecore. Um, so I will say it's probably really easy to fit into that aesthetic because, I mean, all you have to yeah. do is buy a pink outfit and then your Barbie core. Um, yeah. But I don't think that, it, you know, it, not a lot of people walk around in pink clothes the whole time. <laughs> um, so I, I don't think it's a very sustainable thing. I don't think you can really go to work in this. <laughs> but yeah. it's not about it's not about that. Um, but. I, I think I'd rate it, like, 4 out of 5. I still think it's a good aesthetic. It's not for me, though. Yeah. It's 4 out of 5. is fine. Okay. Uh, moving on. I don't remember how many of we, these we have left. Um, I do have okay. an honorable mention at the end, um, which we'll, we'll get to. Um, the next one is Kawaii, which I, is supposed to be, like, it's similar to Coquette, but it's different, so I'm going to explain it. Uh, this one has been around longer. Um, the kawaii aesthetic, which translates cute, um, is based in colors and a cute style clothing. Uh, it typically includes all colors of the rainbow, and occasionally it's very bright colors. Um, it's all about layering many textures and accessories to maximize the cuteness factor. Um, a lot of the outfits that I was scrolling past were just like... <laughs> Like, patterns on patterns on patterns. Very different patterns. Um, yeah, it's very maximalist. It's it's very big in... Um, is it Korea? I think it's Korea. <laughs> it's very big in that place. Um, and they have a lot of different, like, subgenres of aesthetics there that are very, like, big. Like, Lolita fashion is very big and everything. Uh, but this is just about kawaii right now. And I think that this is, like, coquette if it was cool. <laughs> hmm. I think this is coquette if it was um, more fun and more of, like, a girls-girls uh, girls kind of aesthetic. Um, I would never wear anything like this, though. It's too bright for me. <laughs> um, but do I love the rainbow? Yes. And am I a lesbian? Yes. So, <laughs> it does have a special it, plate in my heart. I think it's fine. I think it's cute. I I know a lot of people who dress like this, and I didn't particularly like the people, so I might just not associate it <laughs> with a lot of nice things, but, um, I mean, I don't know, it's a little annoying to me. It is, it is very, it is a very out there aesthetic. Um, I do like the more pastel photo that I have up here. I feel like that's something that I could actually maybe go out in. <laughs> Um, not the shoes though. Um, not, not because they're too much, just because they look uncomfortable. <laughs> um, but anyways, 
Um, I do think it's cute. It is not for me. And I also do kind of associate it with people that want to look cute because they're like not really that good of a person. But yeah, um, I would rate it like a three out of five because it's not bad. Yeah, three is but, fine. But it's okay. It's good. It's um, fine. Yeah. I don't really like it, but it's part of Inco Cat. Yeah. Um, moving on is Mermaid Core Aesthetic. This one was the one I was most excited <laughs> about. Um, me and Olivia are I mermaid girlies. Um, the Mermaid yeah. Core Aesthetic is based on everything aquatic, seashells, water, and of course mermaids uh it includes sparkles layered skirt skirts sheer tops bikini tops and shell seashell necklaces um and i'm mostly um excited about this because i think that it's just straight up like cute and fun i don't think most people go around like walking around like this every day but if they do more power to them (laughs) um i have not personally seen anybody wearing this like with my real life eyes not through a screen um, but if I could dress like this every day, I think I would. <laughs> if I had the confidence, I, um, I feel like I would, because I do think it's very cool. No, I think it's cute. I think it's like if cottagecore was like glitzy and glam. Mm-hmm. Um, I I mean, I've seen stuff like this before, like in beachy areas, like a lot in Hawaii and stuff. Um. But I didn't know there was a name for it. I thought that was just like boho. <laughs> but um No, it's it's fine. I mean <laughs> I I don't know. I don't like layering skirts. But um other than that, it's yeah. Yeah, I do think Sorry, that my it... opinions have gotten worse and worse as we've gone on. <laughs> <laughs> I do I do think that the um I do think that what was I about to say? <laughs> Oh, sorry. I was starting to say something. Oh, I do think that it is very similar to Boho, especially the photo I had chosen. Uh, and it is very, like, because I do as- associate Boho with the beach. I think a lot of people do. And Mermaid Core is obviously associated with water. So <laughs> they're yeah. very beachy. Um, but I, I, I do, I do see, um, I do I do actually like this one a lot more than Boho maybe mm-hmm. because I like blue. <laughs> I don't know if that's the only difference in my brain or not. But Well, it's like oceany. It's cute. Yeah. Um it's it's something that, you know, um us girlies born in July like you wouldn't understand Olivia. You're born in December. <laughs> <laughs> it's just for me, okay? Um but anyways, personally, I'd rate it a 4 out of 5. Yeah. Yeah, because it's cute. Is that okay with you? Yeah. No, okay. yeah, because, I mean, I just don't see it a lot, but, um, I mean, the times I do see it, I mean, I I do not see a, a ton of fat people wearing it. Yeah. Which marks it down a notch, but, um, and, I mean, it's it's totally something fat people can wear, but it's just, like, it's not that comfortable for a lot of us, so I don't know. Yeah, also, uh, unrelated, I just noticed in the photo that I put up, she has one of those, I don't know if you watch those videos about, like, I don't remember what her last name is, but Aaron's videos on um, YouTube Shorts where she makes, like, videos about um, growing up in the 2000s and stuff. Um, she has like a little Playboy bunny, bunny um, tattoo on her on her she stomach. Knows I can't see it. Um, it's hold on, it's right here. It's this black. Oh thing. shoot! Right? That's funny. I think that that's I funny. I can barely see it, but that that is funny. I just noticed it. I think that it's funny. Um, it could also just be a normal bunny, but I like to think that it's that one. <laughs> Anyways, moving on. Mermaid core four out of five. Moving mm-hmm. on. Um to fairy core. Oh uh, yeah. Here we go. And fairy core aesthetic. I was waiting for this one. Uh is based in everything mystical. Castles, flowers, mushrooms, sparkles, and of course fairy wings. Um the outfits may include as seen on the photo on on here. 
uh, long skirts, layered tops, vests, and may either be based in nature colors or fully magical and bright colors. Um, I, I really like this aesthetic. And I'm very pleased to say that when I was looking this up on Pinterest, I did see a lot of plus size girlies wearing it. And I will say that I didn't see very many people of color wearing it. So I don't know about that. Um, but the, the, it's but not like, totally good. yeah, it's not it's like not they good. can't. I just, I just always get a little upset when I don't see any inclusivity yeah. on, you know, apps and everything. But um, I think that this aesthetic is really, really cute. And I think that like this is like a totally normal thing you could wear out of the house without getting stares or anything um because it's just a well put together outfit um and also who doesn't want to look like a fairy <laughs> yeah all of us want to look like a fairy at the end of the day I, that is the end I, goal <laughs> when i think of this aesthetic i think of like um not just like fairies but like m like wizards and like fantasy stuff mm -hmm. so I like it. I it reminds me of um Lord of the Rings a little bit, which like in a good way. <laughs> um there is a lot of different aesthetics in Lord of the Rings. Um this probably gives off the most hobbit <laughs> <laughs> in a good way. I yeah. mean, it's very like cutesy, it's tame, it's not too obnoxious. I I like it. Yeah. I give it a 5. 5 out of 5. Oh yeah. All right, uh, moving on. I don't know if this was the last one or not. Okay, that was the last one. Um, but I do have an honorable mention really quick. Um, and it's the weathercore aesthetic. And I know nothing about this aesthetic. But my brother, my brother, I didn't know either. My brother was called weathercore once by his friend like a month ago. Um, and was told that about him and his taste in music. And the worst part about that to my brother, he was very upset about it. And then my brother was like, I didn't even tell you the worst part. And he was like, and I was like, what? And he was like, it's because I was listening to the Rippingtons. And the first time I ever heard a song by them was on the brother channel. <laughs> <laughs> um, so RAP to my brother. I'm sorry that you were called out like that. But you are weathercore. After looking at some photos, it like, I don't know what weathercore aesthetic, like, outfits are supposed to be they're literally like they it's just literally dressing for the weather <laughs> I don't, I don't um, know what the aesthetic is supposed to be for the outfit but uh, I guess I've got a five um, <laughs> thank you Kyle for being weather core mm -hmm. uh, you so are yeah uh, thank you to, to my brother Kyle for being so weather core and uh, that is it uh, um I would like to add two more honorable mentions. Okay. Um, I added them throughout the um, throughout the podcast, but um, goth, five out of five, great, and um, uh, twenty tens. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I miss you. Yeah. I know. I know you're ugly, but I missed you. Yeah. Um. So that's that's it. That's all I have. That's it. Should I go through them all? <laughs> yes. So, um, Plant Mom, we started off with Plant Mom is 5 out of 5, Light Academia 3, Dark Academia 3, Cottage Core 5, Batty five, 3, Grunge 1, uh, Grandma Chic 5, Y2K 2, <laughs> or Y2K, um, <laughs> Old Money 1, Coquette 1, Cyberpunk 3, Barbie Core 4, Kawaii 3, Mermaid Core 4, Fairy Core, and Weather Core, both fives. Nice. Well, yes, of we, did it. we did it. We did it. And and that's all we have for you tonight. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, thanks for joining us, Pasta Fam. Um, we love you. We miss you. We hope you eat some good pasta real soon, all right? Take us out, Kyle. I still a beast and I wouldn't want to be you, so I'll see you later. I'm afraid of alligator, I'm going to hit the road, you totally detoed and uh, out of here and grab another beer. I still a beast and I wouldn't want to be you, so I've got to 
the split Selling tiny elephant It's about the time Oh, rigged Tony Ryan Oh, the world of master So that's what it's the end of the cat